Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this afternoon. Now we are going to get right back into No Man Can A Hinder Me. We are in chapter number 35, which is entitled Freedom Now. And it goes like this. The 60s roared in following the dynamite combination of the student sit-ins in the southern part of the country. The bravery of Mrs. Rosa Parks and the eloquence of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We Philadelphians caught the freedom now fever too. We formed the Black People's Unity Movement, BPUM, led by Black activists Walter Palmer, Maddie Humphrey, Fred Bonaparte, Calvin Robinson, and myself. Father Paul Washington lent BPUM a permanent meeting place at his huge Church of the Advocate, located in North Philadelphia. We had, what, excuse me, what had initially excited us was the experiment of John Churchville, who some years before had taken a large group of preschooled black children and taught them about the grandeurs of 15th and 16th centuries, Africa. And I don't know if I said grandeurs correctly, so I'm going to spell it for you, which is G-R-A-N-D-E-U-R-S. Now let us continue. He surrounded his storefront school with large pictures of the great pyramids, the pictures of black kings and queens of ancient Egypt, Kemet, and the empire of Songhai. The children of Churchville's school learned reading and writing and were far ahead of their public school in the first and second grades, the children began losing their initial enthusiasm, academic proficiency, and beautiful behavior when entering third grade. Searching for a cause, we observed there were no positive pictures of African grandeur and royalty on display in public schools. Instead, Abe Lincoln, George Washington, and various Dick and Jane images were prominently featured. In addition, most of the public schools in North Philadelphia bore the names of white people further enhancing the intrinsic value of Caucasian alignment. BPUM began separating into various programs called ministries. The political ministry had a, as its goal a tax on injustice that occur in the black community. It also summoned various political figures into meetings to keep their feet to the fire on issues benefiting the black community. This ministry was headed by the powerful Walter Palmer, who went on to get a law degree and founded a charter school to better follow his passion. BPUM formed a 
theatrical ministry to gather young people who loved to act and wanted to learn the behind the scenes techniques involved in presenting meaningful meaningful excuse me stage productions this ministry involved into freedom theater a production company that went on to earn fame and stature across America. BPUM also formed the Community Schools Ministry, led by my brother, Calvin, and me. This ministry started as a gathering place for teachers and neighbors to discuss more productive methods of educating Black children. During these meetings, I was fortunate to meet Dr. Walter Lomax, and his beautiful wife, Beverly. The Lomaxes invited Calvin and me to their home on numerous occasions, and we were introduced to many of their friends and neighbors, creating close relationships that persist to this day. In addition, Dr. Lomax became a dedicated philanthropist aiding scores of organizations involved in the Black struggle. BPUM also created a mass communications ministry, which taught how the press, TV, and movies consistently devalued the intrinsic worth of Black people with language, image, and Placement. Fred Bonaparte, who was a newspaper editor at the time, guided this effort. As BPUM grew larger and its impact more meaningful, meetings began to center around what was so evident in the community, schools, ministry. There was an essential need for corrective African history to be taught to everyone, especially in the public schools. The academic playing field could never be leveled with European history taught at every turn and corrective African history ignored completely. I searched for an opportunity to demonstrate to the Board of Education officials how achievement scores for Black children soared when they were taught at John Churchville's storefront, Freedom school. I was hoping for something to happen, which could prove conclusively the academic value of African history. Hmm. Now that does complete chapter 35, which is entitled Freedom Now. So stay tuned for chapter 36, which is entitled The Mathematics Experiment. Now for today, I certainly want you to be well, take care, and it be at thy will. I will uh, speak with you here on Palm Praise 2. And if you certainly like uh, chapter 35, I do have this in a playlist where you can listen to the previous chapters all the way up to this chapter for this book right here. No man can hinder me. So, be it thy will for me to speak with you. I said that once and I said it twice here on Poem Praise 2. So, till next time. Later, y'all.